Okay, so it would be nice to have a kind of standard library in Pheasant. Um, it is thing that is missing really in maybe most or all assemblers. I am not aware of any having really somehow standardized complete library. Maybe high level assembler, but that's not assembler really. And it's my very two is only the best one really. Let's not start another war here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, it was clear that we need one. There were some problems with how should we do and how much should we do. And this, um, it ended up that way that I am almost uh, only me, only I am uh, writing it and I have decided to make it very simple and uh, so it will be very, very quite flexible to use. So I am not using any macros here. I am not uh, importing required symbols there, like Win32 and API or so. Oh, I forgot to mention another import important thing about standard library is that it allows or makes it very easy to create multi-platform, no, multi-operation system programs, which is quite problematic with assembler. Well, you need some uh, system-dependent layer that you can replace. In library. Yes, I, in library I have a uh, layer that's uh, platform independent and layer that's platform specific. And how, how thin is the layer that is platform specific? Uh, as thin as possible. Sometimes even at price of uh, speed speed or you know I have to maintain it and if I change interface or function from the layer I have to change the other one and I have to change the documentation the documentation for the other one. And it's quite ugly to maintain so I am trying to keep it as thin as possible. Now I can show rough or about its hierarchy uh, uh, its structure about basically. Uh, the it consists of modules. These modules are just some set of procedures and maybe definitions. Then there's a, a comment from Clutter. What? A comment from Clutter, he says, keep the standard library relatively simple yes. so you don't fail like MASM32 library. <laughs> Yes, I am keeping it. I am not using any macros there, even if they would be helpful. I rather uh, write some set of instructions ten times than to have their macros there or these things. I am trying to keep it simple, similar to idea of Bezin itself. So no over-featuring and only use it only the very uh, low level or very simple features which can be combined. Okay, back to modules. First, uh, there is module which always has to be present. That's called Fastly. It's the core module. For now, it only contains some definitions uh, which are used further in library like um, calling macro data definition, data definition macro and so um, after and then there are quite optional modules some are which uh, perform functions these <coughs> other modules are really just some procedures so there is maybe the most basic memory management provides memory management, very basic memory management interface. You got allocating, reallocating, uh, freeing, allocating, allocating block, and then some helper 
procedures like uh, finding a pattern in memory or uh, copying memory somewhere with taking a kind of overlapping code so it's not problem to copy memory for bytes or light or something like that. Um, this module could be optional but so many modules use it that it's, you would have it there anyway. Then, um, what can be next? Uh, file access. Again, you have very basic fun functions like open file, create file, read from file, write to file, close file. It is, uh, this causes big problems with being platform independent because some platforms behave very differently. On Linux, you can open directory as a file. On Windows, it's not possible. Um, Linux is not very general with giving, with returning errors about invalid access to file. Some platforms allow it to open file read only, write only. So this is not very clearly defined, but for its purpose, it's working. After that, there is this is the change I am implementing now: static string module to work with strings. Um, originally, I have been trying to avoid working with static strings, but I decided that's not a good approach because you know, working with a dynamic string is quite slow, and uh, sometimes you need to have string where you have it. You need to place it into a given buffer. Um, again, it contains basic string procedures like concatenating string, or getting substring, comparing strings, or copying strings, and so. Uh, is it for zero ended strings? Yes, uh, for zero ended strings. And to every string, you will push a pointer to string, you will uh, give to the procedure pointer to string, and always, also the buffer size. So it will not be possible, like in old C standard library, to have and so many overflows. Would there be a version for uh, Pascal write strings? Uh, it will be in dynamic strings. Uh, this is another module. If these are dynamic strings, which are allocated from memory using this uh, and these strings will have stored the buff will have the buffer size and the and the actual length of string until the zero bytes stored at uh, negative offsets at minus eight and minus four. So you can still use them with pointers. This will be only done these two things I am recommending yes. now. And uh, Working with them is a little nicer with these dynamic strings. Sometimes uh, it's a little harder because you must manage the buffer size, you must forward to know how long will the string be mm -hmm. and so, but generally I want to have enough functions there so that users wouldn't have to access the string themselves too, too often. Another advantage is you can use this for string of whose length you don't know. Of because using only static strings you must give some upper bound and if you give it too large then most of the time it wastes these resources. I think some of the methods of the dynamic strings could be then reused to make some kind of big number of calculations library where there are also numbers of uh, sizes. And yes. And you would have to resize for example, you multiply the numbers and the result is much longer. I was thinking about having some... Uh, with every memory block you allocate, my function places header to, to the beginning of block and returns a pointer further. And that uh, has stored for every allocated block its size. So you can relatively quickly access to it. And for every uh, thing you allocate, like dynamic strings or uh, you have some list and list nodes, Later, and so uh, we'll have also its actual size 
stored and negative offset, so it will be quite standardized. But uh, I will keep accessing to it, not directly with uh, using negative offset pointer and negative offsets, but with function function code. For me, the um, speed isn't that important so if I would have because of that redesigned the library. So to get size of memory block, you call them. You call from this, you have this call which first does couple of checking, then returns you one, remove from memory and returns. So I am keeping getting that size this way. Now a couple of what we have yeah. next will be conversion library. Uh, did I do something about dynamic strings? I don't know. Oh, do you do you know bet about this approach? Maybe think that you uh, cannot use static strings with stored length and so. But anyway, I don't want to over feature it. My library having there some you know, other letters, so there, uh, it will be confusing. Uh, I forgot to mention, there is one problem about static string library. You are always giving destination buffer, and how to behave when a uh, destination buffer is not long enough. Uh, there are several approaches to it. If I always return error, then uh, uh, you cannot use this behavior on purpose. For example, you want to replace two bytes with something using string operation. So, but it may both uh, versions returning error or just returning some flag may have some advantages. I am not. I have not decided yet. But probably, I will be returning error always. It's no. Uh, questions. Yes. Uh, Fader or uh, Cosby says, "How about memory map files?" Memory map files. I didn't think about support for now. Uh, it, it's not problem for me. Problem is whether every platform has it because. Uh, my uh, interface has to be safe for every every platform. So, and if some platform doesn't have it, then I will not implement it. Currently, I have version for uh, Win32 and Linux, uh, and I am discussing uh, implementation for SkyOS with Met DST 88, I think. So I will see. For now, I don't have them implemented, but it's not a problem. It's uh, two functions, one for Win32 and second for Linux. And then it would be, I would have to test it. Not much work if someone requests that. Okay, conversion module. Uh, this will be, this module will be performing basic conversions like number to string or mm, I don't know memory memory dump to just set of bytes separated by space and these kind of things. So um, maybe string kind of Not yet. That's too much. That's too much. Okay. I see for now the destination of this is going to be some kind of very basic library. Very basic. Uh, and you will build, other people can build more complex libraries on top of it. Yes, that's roughly the idea. I said very basic features and you can combine them. And we'll, then there will be maybe optional modules which are uh, mm, more high level, but you don't have to use yes, it. Yes, this is something that gives you the independency of operating system. Yes. This is the most important. Yes, one of the problems one of the most important things. Also, it will always store to given buffer of given length. So you can use this to emulate some of the printful uh, features. 
like you know, you know when you replace number before. Like something like. when you only want to write the first eight characters of string or so it will be implementable using this way always mm -hmm. passing buffer and this way and later these convention modules or uh, functions will be will also have versions which will directly work with this for example convert to dynamic string not to buffer of given way if you don't know how long the conversion will be for that way. Now oh, this module is mm, not even started, I would say. I still don't have idea about converting real numbers. Maybe I should don't steal it from Passing. It doesn't it is not in one direction. Yes, yes. But still it's better than nothing. Oh some of the routines can be used to Remake it into the other version. Mm. So, uh, on the top of conversion module, I can make stream support. Streams, which will be in the first versions only console. Console? How do I pronounce that? Console. Console? Yeah, console. Console uh, input and output. Like get uh, writing something to console and getting some input from user. It, uh, for input it is required to have some convention modules, like when you want to read a number or so. And same for output. And this still be a little problem. Uh, for input I will have to implement my own buffering. And also, this may be a mm, design problem, how to make this stream kind of overloaded, overloadable. So you can, uh, let's say, have stream, like an object-oriented programming, you have stream object which is then uh, overtaken by some encrypted mm, stream or something like that, which is then overlapped by some stream that um, checks whether data is correct and so this might need having object oriented approach like every stream handle you get will have some pointers to handlers or something like this I'm still not sure something like inter-process communication also? Uh, support for do you mean like executing a thread or something like this? Mm -hmm. That's the last module I have, but it's not really a module yet. Process. This one has now only exit process and get command line functions. Later, I will have I will add some uh, call that will create uh, that will create child process and that will create thread another. And I have to catch all threads. And what do they ask about is whether you can make a stream that one process is outputting to and the other one takes it as input? Mm, for now, surely not. I am not managing it. I have enough problems with making, for example, these things mm -hmm. to be able to run in multi threaded environment. For example, memory allocator in multi threaded environment is how to write. There are maybe three on internet and then all of them are very big and either you have a lot of wasted memory or you have a lot of uh, context switches. It's really not so simple as it appears. This will be generally what I want for fast week. And every everything other will be just add-on. Not really. There can be also some platform specific modules you can write for like uh, DirectX uh, wrapper or some, something like that for now this will be even this mm -hmm. is optional um, it's, it doesn't belong to core 
but it is already written by John Pound, so I include it. Well, I myself am thinking about some more powerful platform, independent modules can talk about this, mm -hmm. like Big Number Library I mentioned, or yes, by time, of course. Low image processing or something like that. Yes, but by time, for example, I still have a code from Descartes, which is doing, which is having a uh, packing on streams using some phased algorithm. So it would be nice to use these plot files or so. so. There are yes, there are many possibilities with this, but it's not important for me now. I want just some solid core that's well designed. Well, of course, this has to be finished first. Yes. And you know, it's more design work than writing. Not that big piece of code. For what the problem will be memory management. I have to write my own heap allocator, which isn't simple for movie threading environment. And uh, second, which might be problem, is how to solve a uh, buffering input in, in, in the stream. I have to have my, my own buffering and um, this may result if you have you remember I mentioned more levels of screens. I may end up uh, having separate buffer on each level, which is not very good. So I have to solve this design of the buffer. Uh, no, I don't see a solution yet. Right now I am working on stream module. There's a lot of uh, exceptional cases you must test. So you can you can see it in my testing scripts. They are in file. Um, this file is not uploaded on internet yet. Sorry, uh, but I I have a testing scripts. I will upload it soon. Uh, that um, in which you see how many exceptional cases there are, like when you test a uh, zero length buffer or destination buffer is not long enough or source buffer is not long enough or if you are taking sub substring from string then uh, size may be overlapping the source string and there are very many cases. For future I want even to implement uh, catching invalid pointers as to man, pointers to be possible area but it's not to be done yet when I only support these two platforms, these two platforms, because it's possible that I I won't be able to do it on another platform. But generally, this is the idea. Maybe I can talk about file layout in my library so people can easier navigate there. So it's developer library. Uh, Inside there, you have the fucking menu mode. For every mode, there is a separate file. Um, this uh, this directory contain, contains general documentation about fastly this entire one thing. I think it's like this. This is this directory contains uh, documentation of modules. Maybe this this is not personally but modules. I'm not really sure now. Uh, here for each module there is a file which contains uh, this the beginning general description of module, its ideology, how it's working, what is it using, and inside there uh, there are the uh, documents documentation for each function. This was documentation. Then uh, the then is the um, fastly source code itself. I am having many these in my source. Uh, here is code for 
uh, in, inside this directory resides the platform independent source uh, of modules. So for every module there is a file, uh, like uh, mem vodka inc, or mem point inc, so uh, the module can be using also some or, or the module can need some platform dependent code. In that case, the on, on that uh, module dependent code is included from within this file uh, from this directory. Also, there is a uh, fastly slash index. Uh, this is included automatically, automatically by the file because on the beginning of source you define which system you are using, something like and when including it, uh, something like this is used. Oh. Yeah, definitely. Besides the uh, file specifically or the type of executable or the things which need to be defined for type of executable like imports and PE and sections and there. Besides that, uh, this is only thing you need to change to be to port to another platform if you are using only test mode. Back to the directories. Also, there may be uh, some platform dependent modules. This will reside in this directory. But uh, other times, you are not including file, files from this directory, you are including files from this. And they take the part they need. After that, I am. Resolution. Yes, Revo it has to be inside match. I used it just for example. You can look at fast mode instead of match not use. Mm. Then I got this is my internal file. Here I got tests for the modules which I use. So I try to be, keep it really simple. You just always need to. So this is example of uh, not really complete example how to use. Uh, I think this is not all as this system it doesn't really think it is important. How to uh, you may or how to include the source of FASM or how to link your program with FASM? Because it's uh, aimed at on, only at FASM users, I decided that I will, it will be just included. Not it can be linked, of course, but it is designed to be included. And I uh, 
advise not to use some environment var variables. It's possible that just by simply copying the Fresnoy directory. Right. Just by copying this directory into your project directory. And then including like this. This is module which always has to be present. And uh, you are including another module. That's everything you need. And after that, you can start using, you can use procedures of testing. Another important thing is calling standard. I am using uh, STD call means uh, arguments are pushed or pushed or pushed how do you pronounce that? Push? Push. Well, pushed on stack in reverse order and uh, return volume is returned in EAX all other general purpose registers are preserved. Uh, but there is, oh, I will give an example here. Each function, when it returns, uh, when it co returns with error, it sets a carry flag and uh, returns error number in the AX re register and uh, doesn't return anything else. So after every calling of FESMOLIP style function, you must check for error. I find this much better than returning errors within the return volume in EAX because you have then reserve some volumes to mean error. You can see nicely on the API, uh, which means sometimes error is zero, sometimes it is one, sometimes it is not zero, sometimes it is uh, minus one, sometimes it is seven FF. Right? So this is a very some, decision, sometimes it is uh, not returned, but uh, set last error is called, but sometimes, but not always, some functions which return error code immediately doesn't set set last error, it's help. But, and it's just uh, back to the method that was used by DOS. Mm, it always, it, it always return error in the flag. Almost which always it was uh, the carry flag set, and if mm -hmm. carry was set, then the code of error wasn't ready. I mean, well, it's a long time ago and I wasn't there <laughs> checking too much. <laughs> there, are some, <laughs> there are some questions. Yes, here I'll read them, you can stay there. It's so uh, Okaspi says, uh, I've checked only very early versions of Phasm Lib, like eight months or so ago. Uh -huh. Does current string function support Unicode? No. No. <laughs> Quick also. <laughs> In future there will be, there might be some Some modules like this. Really, current version of Fastmoon has to be some core given, uh, which can be extended. I want to finish at least something. But also, so yeah. the other people can then use and uh, make it. It's not a problem to design, it's not a problem to add it, just coding. Yeah, but this will also be something to do in the conversion, I will convert between different encoding strings. Yes, you are right. <laughs> so it becomes harder, but it may be overcome by first converting into uh, a, a bit or normal ASCII strings and converting from ASCII string to Unicode or something like that. 
really high personally. Don't use Unicode very much. I wasn't thinking about this, honestly. I will have to think. But if I say it's not that important for now. Any other questions? No, they sort of stopped policing each other. <laughs> so, oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I have a question about errors. Uh, maybe it would be a little bit possible for the uh, some things that can be done on one operating system that can be done on the other. Maybe you could implement it, but on some operating system, return an error code that this is something that cannot be done on this system. This is what I don't know, because uh, it makes it harder for the users and people. For example, somebody is writing something for Win32, and uh, then he and this error can be written on some Linuxes or so, but then he ignores. And then this error, and after he ports, he doesn't so remember. Right, so no, so it you is, would like to keep it, it is gone inside the system specific record. What? So you would like it to keep it inside the system specific folder, inside the Windows oh. library, and not the idea of oh, Fastly won't support platform specific things. Fastly will only contain platform independent things. Uh, yes, but you said, you said that in the directory of given operating system there yes. are five yes, 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 in that case for these things will be platform inside platform dependent modules. But it's future. Generally, uh, Fastly will support only that what is common over every platform and uh, dependent things can always be done with uh, if defined or if OS equals Win32 to this user can manage these things by himself and it's less confusion and maybe even easier than this or I can use the platform independent modules uh, about I also return some additional uh, return values in flex not only in EAX because Festival it is aimed at only at Festival users you know so that's why I can return it very flag. Meaning uh, sometimes I can uh, give more info like func function that runs to file or function that reads to file. I can set zero flag if it has reached end of uh, file or you know, there's many possibilities. I can have string uh, for like there was a nice example with strings. Mm, yeah. Like all some cases when I return something empty, I set zero flag or. Oh, so you can make chains of conditional jumps immediately <laughs> and <laughs> like before. Yeah, I'm afraid it will. So already now the real Fastmoot code looks quite wiki, uh, sick, because I use macro macros to call my functions. So it's always call, jump with carry flag, call, jump with carry flag, call, jump with carry flag. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a problem making some uh, high level structured exception handling macros, like uh, try, throw, catch, you know. Would be, thanks to this, it would be very easily implementable. Just you make try and uh, overall call with macro mm -hmm. that checks for carry flag value, and if it's found, it will jump to catch. Of course, it will be without uh, unrolling stack and all this, but within that procedure, this will be very easily implementable. Another, another nice thing is for calling, I use a uh, macro. I named it with call. It's uh, your sort of the call, standard call macro, stolen, plus, plus some functionality edit. Uh, for example, I can have nested calls. Oh, name of function here. Let's say this half eight. Like this. Advantage is uh, that thanks to returning error in carry flag, I can check error even on this nested call. And in that case, jump here, 
and other things that are already pushed on stack and everything. So you can use this and to have error checking, unlike in C or something. In this case, it is better than C because you, in C, in theory, you can call function, call, use nested calls of functions, but in reality, almost every function has a returns error value, and you have to check the value always. So anyway, it is on use. Here you, you can use it. Well, that was cool. And by the way, you cannot uh, define functions that get a variable number of arguments because this is just the default. So. Mm. It is confusing. I don't need it. If I would need it, it's no problem. I don't see that as a problem because I am in assembler. I know how much I have on stack. I have. I can uh, stick myself. I don't have use uh, return here with use in some given number. You know, I'm using assembler. I can do that. Well, it's kind of tricky, but you can always just pass a pointer to the no, no, What I want. Uh, uh, important aspect is that I want to uh, support, still keep, um, leave, it a, leave users possibility to use only plain, pure assembly code, not macros. And having uh, to um, var or remove variables from stack behind each call is why it's not very nice in handwritten pure assembly. No. The, for example, uh, Mazegen is designing this for internal purposes library too, but he relies on macros. And for example, his error handling is done that way that you always uh, give some pointer to a uh, buffer which will hold error info and so, which is nice so, solution, but uh, then it is hard to use such library with pure, ass pure, pure assembly code. When you have these things, you have to do always. Even this is not very nice <laughs> behind every code. F8 has a uh, question. It says, does FASMLib use some of the modern optimization instructions MMX, SSE, SSE2, or is it compatible with older CPUs? For now, I wasn't using them. There's only one function uh, in string module which does fast copy of strings using, uh, using MMX, but it is just remain from, remains from John Pound. I don't need it yet, but I don't see a problem with that. Maybe there will be needed some handling to check whether it is present or so. For now, environment to run or use fast movie piece. Uh, 32 bit code, being 3 sufficient. Multiply to all, roughly. Code must be low, uh, or da data and code must be about uh, 10,000 legs. It, because the lower values are used as handles. So you can separate. If one day we make a 64 bit then we can use all these extensions because every yes, single processor has them. I personally don't see problem with that, but I didn't need it. Is there more of oh, there are the data definition macros I mentioned? Oh, again, stolen from fresh, but I have changed the names, I like the word. Initialized data. Data. I think this don't need a lot of explanation. I decided to use prices instead of data and, and data because uh, if you are using this inside macro definition, uh, escaping prices becomes more natural than escaping this. It has few problems. For example, you uh, this uh, is. Uh, taken as macro argument and it isn't work, working always if you have something like this. 
it won't work, you'll have to split the lines and so But it's not quite a big deal. So if someone doesn't know the, what these macros do, uh, you can use them multiple times and they collect the data definitions and, and place them in one spot where you can include the data. It's something that was done by Linker previously. When you had more modul modules, in every module you define data section and code section and linker branch it. And now, uh, because we are using only including, not separate modules, but we need to have uh, data definitions spread across many files in source, and we want them in one place in binaries. So this is purpose of these macros. Anyway, I think people know these macros if they don't need that much description and they are I think well described in uh lead you can find on the internet it should be in the, I'm not sure if this modules are fessly in this file anything more I forget about something. Okay then.